But I think everyone is like that. I think everyone has the possibility to think and do things like that. I don't think you need to be an artist to do that, to look at the world and be like, we could live in a better place and think about ways in which we can make this place that we inhabit better space. And it doesn't need to be, um, yeah, it doesn't need to be labeled as art. Like to define myself, I think is really hard. Um, not because I'm like all over the place with it, but in terms of if someone asks me what I do, mm. um, every day as a practice, as something that I like focus on, I read and write poetry and I think about what is it, what does black skin look like in cinema? Um, I think of folklores, folk tales from back home that I would really love to see in cinema that don't exist in cinema at the moment. You know, quotes or proverbs or poems from home that we don't have a language for in, in mainstream English. I want to tell stories. I want to have a dialogue or um, present ideas that I want to see out there in the world. We consume so much visual stuff um literally like just every day like just everyday things like, like things that we take in we take in so much stuff mm. and i'm just hyper aware that the things that i take in majority of those things mm. have no impact on me as in no relationship to to my inner being you know i intentionally want to make work that i feel like speaks to me but I guess everything that we do is, is storytelling right everything is a form of language and um, the way we communicate ideas is through some way somehow symbols or emotion or language or signs so yeah it's that I am trying to say something and I'm using different mediums or different formatters yeah. to explain these ideas um, sometimes I'm not trying to tell stories. Sometimes I'm just basically trying to say how I feel. Mm. Um, sometimes I'm trying to tell stories about something. Um, but I guess it's, yeah, finding the right language, finding the right words, finding the right medium, finding the right format to present the ideas that I feel like are needed. When I was at uni, I started performing poetry mm. and uh, my friends were like, oh, you're really good at this. Yeah. So then I continue that. Um, mm. But I think, to be honest, I'm not really good at anything else. I'm one of those people that I'm not, like, I'm not employable. There's nothing that I can really do that someone would be like, I'll pay you X amount for this, apart from the things that I do. Mm. So that's why that's my job. <laughs> I used to always write, um, I just didn't share it. Um, my, my grandma was like a huge champion of my work. She used to gas me up, even if I was terrible. And I just remember those moments. Um, and after that, like after she was gone, I didn't really have that anymore. Mm. Um, but I just remember the feeling of like her affirmation, you know? Um, so those are like, I guess, formative moments where like you kind of start thinking, oh, maybe I do have something to present. You know, early memories of my poems were more like me trying to uplift myself. You know, you watch, you watch things as a kid, right, um, on TV, and you want to be whatever you see on TV. If yeah. you're the cool actor, whatever, um, or a footballer, whatever it is that you see on TV, you're like, oh, this is, this is really cool. As a kid, you don't have a language for it. You just know yeah. you aspire to, to what you're seeing. And I think I didn't have um, 
Yeah, I don't think I saw much that kind of just like this resonate. There were similarities, like they're like American things that I would see on TV. They'd be like, oh, this is cool. I hope, you know, one day. But there's still a distance between this kid from Sierra Leone mm. to this person living in LA or New York or whatever it, wherever it was in the world or even England. Um, so I just used to write myself in these stories, um, write me and my family and my friends in these stories. Yeah. That's how it is, like affirming myself, writing affirmations. Mm. Like one day I'll do this, one day I'll be this. There is a man out there that I da 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 whatever that was. That's how I started writing, writing affirmations, like short burst poems. They were terrible poems, but... <laughs> Uh, that's funny because at, at the end of the day, you kind of manifested it in your life in the future without... Yeah, that's actually weird. Now that we're talking about it. Yeah, yeah. that's... Yeah, as a kid, that's what I used to do. Before, like, motivational speakers came about, yeah. I used to write these poems about who I want to be in the future. Yeah, that's how I started, actually. I've actually never thought about that. That's good. <laughs> Um, countries, yeah, uh, Gambia and then uh, the UK. So how how do you think this affected your way of perception? Um, I think trauma is a real thing. Mm. Um, as a kid, like having those experiences, um, you know, leaving war. Like I have got amazing memory of Sierra Leone, mm. but then like after the war, I moved to Gambia. I have an amazing memory in Gambia. Um, and I moved to England, and I've obviously lived there ever since. Um, but I think as a kid, you take in all these experiences and you don't know how to articulate them. And the older you get, you start understanding what, what it is that you're going through or what it is that your mind is going through. I'm the guy that will watch something and be like, this is really cool, but what mm. does it really mean? So I was having like existential crisis as a kid. Like I watch Fifty Cent, I'd be like, "Yeah, this is really cool, but what does it mean in life?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be the one that would ruin everything for everyone when they're having fun because I want to find the deep thing inside of yeah, whatever. And I think that came from like seeing um, so much death in Sierra Leone um, as a kid. And then you move to a completely different culture, completely different like people um, mm. that you know they look like you, but it's very like very different. But then you realize that you're an outsider. So again, finding a common ground to live with other people was yeah. a thing that came up as a kid. Um, and then you come to England and you have to do it all again. And I think all of those things. Like those layered experiences make up who you are and you start thinking, you start seeing the world differently because you you understand that like, you know, there's home and then there's like us as humans that inhabit this space. How do we live as one? How do we live together? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. And because I had to like, I had to be the person in each space yeah. to try and like engage with the locals or get engaged with people of that space yeah i didn't learn how to like you know be comfortable and yeah i still do feel like an outsider not because of um not because i, I don't feel comfortable with my skin mm -hmm. but it's just because like most spaces that I engage with or I'm in, like, yeah, I usually just feel like I'm the only one here. And this is like in black or white spaces. Mm. Like I always feel like I'm thinking too much or yeah. I'm overthinking things or like there are other things that I want to see. Mm. So I'm like the kind of person that would always like, not poke holes, but just question everything constantly and that constant questioning of things leaves you um asking what's more what's what else could be possible in this space 
But maybe that's what makes me an artist, as in because of that questioning and presenting those ideas, then people see and go, oh, you know, we appreciate that, or I've never seen that like that before. On some level, the role of the artist is to question things, look at things differently, mm. present what else could be possible here, or even <clears throat> just play with serious ideas, like mm. things that people hold sacred and like, we can't, this is so sacred, we can't touch this. And then the artist comes in and turn it upside down or play around with it. I think, yeah, on some level also, artists, some way, somehow, because of what's happening mm. in the world, we can then see, um, or they can then see what could be. And they can manifest that in their art, in their thinking, in their presentation. And then you fast forward time, people that, oh, maybe this is, this is what we should be doing. But I think everyone is like that. I think everyone has the possibility to think and do things like that. And I don't think you need to be an artist to do that, to look at the world and be like, we could live in a better place and think about ways in which we can make this place that we inhabit a better space. And it doesn't need to be... Um, yeah, it doesn't need to be labelled as art. There's a series of work that I'm making, um, and one of that series is called Black Corporeal. Um, so between this, there's a film, like a 15 minute uh, film. Um, and then you've got the installation, which is the choir. Mm -hmm. And then there's another piece, um, which hasn't got a name yet. Let's just say it's got untitled. Yeah. But I'm filming that now. Um, and that one, yeah, also addresses similar themes. So looking at hyper-organized spaces, so like cities, yeah. looking at how we move at cities, and looking at, um, yeah, like migration. Um, but it all, all, all of these things are just dealing with, you know, the things that as a black body, mm -hmm. um, as someone who's a black person, whatever that means, how we navigate space. Yeah. how we move um yeah so yeah it's a series of films i don't know how many would be in it but there'll be quite a few works that i'm making so yeah what was apparent to me is that uh, everybody kind of connected to this uh, mm. uh, installation um people who were very different from each other and from their kind of points of view uh, people who had not been kind of like just sitting there and just being silent in their head and just experiencing like everything, the environment, the sounds, the text, everything. So, um, what was your state of mind when you actually put all of this together? Um, it took me years to come up with that oh, really? um, and influenced by a lot of situations. Yeah. Um, so the original piece for that was a poem that I wrote. Um, I think it's 2016 after Eric Garner because mm. um, that was the first time the word I can't breathe became like a, a mainstream thing yeah. before that I think like France Fanon black skin white moss it says we revolt simply because we simply can't breathe the idea of um, just being defined by your skin colour or like mm. being like locked in and the possibilities of things were just limited um and then to know that or to see that like your skin color could lead you to a place where you could be killed um, or just access to spaces are limited mm -hmm. and for me like in my mind the possibilities of anything it should be endless mm -hmm. um there shouldn't be like a limitation to what I want to do in life because of my skin colour. So I think layering all of those ideas, that's where that poem came from in terms of, you know, what does it mean to walk this earth as mm. a human being um, and not feeling locked in? Um, and where does, um, where do we have to look 
um, to understand that. Um, and I didn't want to write something that's a bit angry or, mm. you know, playing on someone else's pain. But just from like a self-reflection, writing that down was just kind of like, you know, looking at myself and the closeness to me and the earth um, and looking like inward. Mm. Um, like there's a quote on the thing, like the revelation is in your chest. Um, like understanding that, like, you know, looking beyond yeah. your skin color, like within yourself, you understand that there's a, there's more to life than, than this and the possibilities of that. Um, the use of choir was for me was just kind of thinking about, you know, this idea of like the group, mm. um, a group of people coming together, yeah. um, thinking about the same thing, meditating on the same thing, yeah. um, existing in a space where we fully understand that where there is breath, there is life. Yeah. And when there's life, there's hope. Mm. Uh, when people come together, the possibilities of hope is just endless. And yeah, using that format as a choir coming in and mm. layering that with like, you know, gospel music, you you open up the possibilities of like, you know, beyond the skin, beyond the physical space, and you 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 kind of. Yeah, it takes you into a space where I guess um, it's not just about the physical, you know, whatever it is, prejudice, mm. um, global warming, um, air pollution, anxiety, mm. whatever it is that stops you from breathing, yeah. you just, you just, it, it leads you to a space where you can think, okay, cool, let mm. me breathe, let me hold it. Yeah. But then just touching on all of those points at the same time. I don't think it'll stop it. There might be more variation of it. It was the, the piece wasn't meant to dress people. It yeah. was meant to be like, here is a state. Here is like the possibility of things. Here is here is a question. Mm. Um, and here are ways to look at things. So it wasn't like I'm trying to address people. I think also like as black artists sometimes um, we're so fixated on race that we try to address whiteness mm. or blackness um, and I think if you remove that in a way and not center whiteness yeah. and just kind of like okay cool as a black person what is it that I want to say mm. and just say that I think it's far more powerful. <laughs> I think that is like my my north star. It's like, can I speak to you know my nine year old self mm -hmm. or my uh, fifteen year old self? So those are like the two points in my life where I move. So move from Sierra Leone to Gambia yeah. and move to England. Um, and I just remember that kid trying to figure out you know life in this new space and yeah i think for me it's like making work for that kid so whoever that kid is now yeah you could see that and think oh it's possible okay. you know there are possibilities here yeah. um you can come from anywhere um and you know i don't like I'm not like a motivational speaker that'd be like, yeah, if you work hard, da 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 da. Because yeah. that's not, also not true. Um, and you don't have to be the greatest. But in terms of being you, being yourself, 
this is possible to fully be you and what that means is you don't have to copy other people um, your ideas are valid the things that you desire there are other people in this world that desire those things too um, the things that you see that you like that you're like oh man this is so amazing there may not be people around you immediately that see the way you see it but there are other people in this world that will see what you saw in there and be like yeah this is incredible you know your tribe is out there and they will come when you fully become yourself mm. um they, they will also look at you and be like oh you're amazing knowing that you know we're all here for a reason mm. and um respecting everyone you meet yeah and um yeah and don't think less of yourself just because other people do um those kind of things yeah. like once you're in that space it doesn't matter what people say about you know it doesn't it doesn't matter if people don't like your ideas yeah. it's just like cool yeah <laughs> this is what this is the best i can do you know like because yeah. and also that's the thing i'm such a perfectionist that like I just remember as a kid that being that's like a thing that crippled me from like presenting my ideas because like, oh man, this is not ready. I want it to be like this. And that perfection, that perfectionist idea only came because of other things I've seen. Yeah. Um, but if I'm just like, you know what, I'm just gonna present this idea as the best way I can. There's nothing else to compare it to. It's just, it's just, it's just me in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like. I'm named after my grandma mm. um, and she is an incredible woman yeah. um, just taught me a lot of stuff um, just she raised me um, and she raised me with so much care um, so much grace mm. she wasn't you know she was always forgiven like with my mistakes and she allowed me to kind of like just be mm -hmm. um so yeah she's definitely like a major influence in my life edward glissard yeah like he's the only reason why i want to speak french his ideas and the way he thinks about poetry language the way he thinks about the world yeah. um i think he's incredible um terence mallet like there's the, yeah, there's quite a few people. Um, um, yes, but I don't know if I would do them because I think, you know, one idea at a time or one, you know, work at a time. But then also I like the idea of doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over, yeah. and over again and see what happens. Yeah. Um, so I think it would all depend on the assignment at hand mm. and if what I'm trying to say needs another medium mm. then I'll play but if it doesn't I'll stick with the medium that I'm using I, I think there's a few things that kind of activate my mind but they might not work for other people um, and I think for me this this idea that like the things that i see in my mind yeah. um can exist and everything that i engage with on a daily basis someone thought about it someone designed it mm -hmm. like everything i'm wearing someone thought about it designed it you know, come out the house, everything I see, the way I engage with traffic, yeah. the way I engage with other people, the way I use, whatever it is that I use to make things possible, someone designed that. Yeah. And I have to decide to myself, am I going to just be passive and just engage with someone else's design and allow someone else's design to dictate how I'm going to live my life the rest of my life yeah. or am I going to be an intentional user of someone else's design mm -hmm. to 
think about what was possible for me and how I can design my own kind of possibilities. Um, but yeah, I think that's something I've been thinking about lately. Just that like, everything is designed. Yeah. Literally everything. Even the mistakes. I'm 34, yeah. right? So like, and I didn't go to art school, mm. like to study art. Um, most of my art history lessons come from YouTube wow. and my friends and uh, asking questions. So, or reading books. Mm. Um, so to be in this space um, right now, I'm grateful, mm. um, considering I'm not employable to do something that someone else um, will see and understand um, is it's amazing. Like, that oh, I can do this thing and people would appreciate it mm. and I get paid for it. Most of the work that I make apart from the poetry, I have to engage with a community or with a group of people to mm. make it happen. And that's the best part, yeah. working with other people. Um, I'm making a, a film on the Black Couple series yeah. that will be uh, shown this summer and then a couple of installations that will be this summer, mm. um, different places yeah. around the world hopefully. Nice. Um, yeah, so yeah, making more work. I'm getting busy, I need to figure out how to chill. But I feel like I'm only just started, so life, life is, is, is good, I think, it's possible. Yes, yeah, so you know I'm doing motivational speaking. Live life. Yeah. Breathe, that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, amazing.